When we stood up for women and reproductive freedom, they said no. When we brought manufacturing back to America, they said no. When we answered the urgent call to protect our planet and invest in clean energy and create tens of millions of good paying jobs, they said no. The Republican conference is saying they are sending us home for six weeks without funding the government? That we have one bill, one bill out of 12 completed because extremists are holding your conference hostage. And that's not the full story. The extremists are holding the American people hostage. The historic dysfunction that we are seeing, this intra-party fight that the American people have been drawn into is imperiling our national security. It will imperil the ability of this government to deliver basic services. It is imperiling our jobs and our responsibility to serve our constituents. But it is also entirely predictable. They're failing to convene Congress today, but for years they have failed to deliver the votes for the American people. When schools and small businesses needed to reopen and the American people wanted vaccines, they said no. When we capped insulin costs for seniors at $35 a month, they said no. When we lowered health care costs and premiums for working families, they said no. When we defended the civil rights of LGBTQ plus Americans, they said no. When we protected lives from senseless gun violence, especially in the wake of the horrors of Buffalo and Uvalde, they said no. When we said women deserve equal pay for equal work, they said no. When we said that childcare and paid family leave should be available to every worker in this country, to every family, they said no. When we secured the fundamental right to vote for every single American, they said no. When we stood by our veterans and expanded their access to health care, they said no. When we defended our democracy two years ago tomorrow from a tyrannical president following the January 6th insurrection, they said no. House Democrats will stand together. We will stand for the American people. I, I don't know how my colleagues across the aisle who voted for the Default on America Act are going to look our veterans in the eye this Memorial Day. You, you have presented our country with an impossible choice, devastating cuts or devastating default. Hungry families or homeless seniors, kids without classrooms or parents without jobs. Empty VA clinics are empty VA clinics are empty savings account. And now you're sending us home with no resolution. That's the plan. To default, to run out the clock. Well, I have some good news for you. 213. Every single member of the Democratic caucus has signed the discharge petition. So before you go home, before you go home, it only takes five patriots, five patriots, to join us in the fight for the American people. Join us, sign the petition, stay here and fight for American families, fight for their American security. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Members are advised that votes are no longer expected in the House tomorrow.
Last votes, we still have more work to do, don't celebrate too early. Uh, last votes for the week and the month are expected now at approximately 250 today, so we will have one more vote series today. Uh, then we will be finished uh, for the August work period. I'll remind the House that just during this month, this House has completed the National Defense Authorization Act, the FAA Reauthorization Act, the Schools Note Shelter Act, and we just passed, of course, the Military Construction and Veterans Affairs Appropriations Act to make sure that our veterans, to make sure that we fully fund health care for our veterans, we support suicide prevention, and we also fund housing and other services for our men and women in uniform who keep us safe. Uh, with that, I would be happy to yield to uh, the Democrat whip, Ms. Clark. Thank you. I appreciate the leader for, for yielding. I think we have very different definitions of success for the American people. As Democrats, we have been focused and have been successful in growing our economy by growing the middle class, lowering health care costs, making sure that we are addressing climate change, having safer communities. We will have 12 days, 12 days when we return to fund the government, to live up to the job the American people sent us here to do. This is a reckless march to a MAGA shutdown. And for what? In pursuit of a national abortion ban? Is that what we are doing here? The American people see through this. They know who is fighting for them, fighting for solutions. This, your time is coming. The American people are watching. They are going to demand accountability. We should be staying here, completing these appropriation bill, stripping out the toxic, divisive, bigoted riders that have been put on these bills and get back to work for freedom and for our economy and the American family. I yield back. Mr. Leader, we are going to continue to stand in this country for some basic principles. That we are sent here for the American people. That we are sent here to defend their freedom. That we are sent here to grow an economy that isn't just for the wealthy and well-connected, but is for the American family. That's the work we're doing. That is the basis of the great economic news coming out. And we are going to continue that fight. We hope that you will say no to extremism, to hatred, to bigotry that is put into these appropriation bills and say yes to solutions and fairness for the American people and to th build an economy where they can see themselves. Funding our government is our basic job. The comments from the GOP conference about how we could go into a MAGA shutdown and it wouldn't matter are outrageous. The last time we had a shutdown, it was $11 billion out of this economy. And don't talk to us about standing for veterans when the GOP was the one that have cut veterans' housing has cut their health care, has said to our women, our active women, vet, vet, military women, said it is okay to ask our military women to fight. Order. You have said to our active duty women that it is okay to fight for freedom for our country, but we are going to take your freedom away. That is not okay. I yield back. 